first impressions was being shocked by the sheer size of these units. When we started unboxing them, this is one of the first ones I opened, and I thought this was the Scout 2.0. This is actually the Scout Mini. This is the Scout 2.0. This is a very large robot, and I was shocked by the size, the sheer strength and durability of it. And then it gets even bigger if you get over here to the bunker, which is our tracked robot. And the bunker shows up in a crate this large. So these are big boy toys. They're industrial sized robots. They're made for heavy duty research and they are incredibly tough. Another thing that stood out to us was how tough the suspension are on these units. Even on the mini here, you can see how thick the CNC aluminum parts are. Uh, they've got suspension on them as well. They're extremely rugged. Uh, I would have a hard time imagining anyone even breaking one of these. The other mini, same suspension here. And then we get all the way over to the Scout 2.0. It's got a double wishbone suspension with huge shock absorbers on it. Uh, you can basically stand on this thing and ride it around. And you can see in here how robust it is. Again, it's almost over-engineered, but these are such strong motors and such strong units that you can carry the extra weight. You get all the way down here to the bunker, it's got a Christie suspension, which is actually modeled after World War II tanks, and that itself is incredibly tough. The Scout 2.0 comes with air-filled tires, as well as the Hunter. Uh, they're practically go-kart tires, they're very tough. Uh, they all come with emergency stop buttons as well. Another cool feature is that the Scout Minis come with two types of wheel drives. You have four independent drive wheels on this one, and you have independent drive mechanism wheels on this one. So this is an indoor robot. You can go in any direction. People are interested in mechanism wheel designs. And this one can be indoor or outdoor with four independent driven motors. They have very robust bumpers in the front to protect the robot for when you ram it into things, which you always eventually will. They've also got LED lights, uh, headlamps in the front. One of the hardware features that I really like is that the mounting rails on these are the same on every single platform. They're 300 millimeters wide, they use large industrial T-nuts, and you can mount things like your entire towers on here, your own robot arms, your own sensors, whatever you want. If you walk on down the line, you can see that every single robot's got them. All the way up to the bunker, it's the same size, so that was very smart because they made everything universal. also come with nice easy access panels on top where if you open it you can get inside which has easy access to your ports, your controllers, uh, different sort of electronics. You've got the Scout 2.0 over here. The panel already open. Inside you can see your motors. You've got your motor controllers. You've got your power management systems. Um, your ports have easy access here. Uh, you can see it all laid out very nicely. But all of your control is taken care of for you. So whenever you're gonna plug into this and control it, you can just use the CAN bus port or the serial port. And if we flip her out, look underneath, you can see the battery goes here. We've got it pulled out at the moment, but it's fairly easy to swap batteries in and out on the Scout 2.0. Um, you can seal it off to have higher IP ratings. And then on the Hunter, the battery actually slides out of the back. It's actually its own case unit. So that one can be hot swapped immediately. Uh, for longer run times. Very few units like this exist on the market where you have all of your electronics, all of your power management, all of your sensors um, connected down to your chassis where all of your hardware is taken care of for you and literally out of the box it's ready to go and you can start developing. And we were incredibly impressed with how well this is put together. I mean you literally have all of your electronics on one tower and it mounts down with four bolts and the entire control tower plugs into the back with one cable CAN bus and you have an entire development kit ready to go. So Matt told you everything that you have to know about the hardware of these platforms. Now we're going to talk about the software. 
And the best way to talk about that is to start with the kinds of sensors and computing platforms that you have access to with these kits. So this kit right here on top of the Scout Mini is the R&D Kit Pro. Uh, we have a standard version of it, which comes with slightly less sensors and computing power, but it's about 30% less in cost. Uh, this guy has a Velodyne Puck LiDAR, a RealSense D435 depth camera, an NVIDIA Xavier, um, and back here we have a uh, 11 point something inch uh, screen. Along with the two kits that I mentioned, the R&D Kit Pro and the R&D Kit, we also have the Auto Kit and the Auto Wear Kit. Uh, you can find more information about those two on our website. So with these platforms, you're going to be driving them around, you're going to be reading in some sensor information, and uh, you're going to want to know a little bit more about the software, and that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so Agilex has created three different open source ways to control your robot. The first one being the Agilex UGB SDK, which is written in C++. Um, it is a driver for their custom CAN protocol. Uh, so we have a CAN bus inside of the robot, and it leads out through this cable and goes into the hat uh, through a CAN to serial or USB converter. Um, and the UGB SDK reads the different uh, signals that it sends, translates them into stuff that applications on top of that can understand. So the two ones for that are the Python SDK, uh, which allows you to get things like the robot state, uh, driver state, actuator state, and also to publish commands like velocities and light control. And then the final way that you can control your robot is through the various ROSH drivers that are available on Agilex's GitHub. So those provide things like the base note, which reads in information from the CAN protocol and then exports it into ROS messages on topics. There are also description packages, which hold things like URDF and mesh files that describe the robot and the various transformations uh, that it has, as well as a a couple packages just to launch some applications like driving and the description packages. Um, using those, you can build on top of them with other open source ROS packages that do things like mapping, navigation, path planning, obstacle detection, if you have a camera, um, tons of different applications, anything you could want to do with a robot. All of the links to the GitHubs will be in the description down below, as well as links to our product pages, uh, product manuals, and anything else that we have mentioned in this video.